Hi everyone! Are you in mood to create a really sweet but yet easy and beginner-friendly page? If your answer is yes, stick with me and I will show you a couple of fun beginner-friendly techniques. One thing that I would always recommend to a beginner is to work on loose pages, because sometimes creating in a journal can put a pressure of being perfect and not making mistakes and can limit creativity. Here, as you can see, I am working on a loose mixed media paper page and I have applied some clean water on both sides of my paper, so I would prevent paper from wrapping. Now, as I have lost my watercolor swatch, here I am trying to figure out which color I want to use. This is just a palette which I have assembled on my own using various manufacturers, but something that I would do recommend to a beginner is to always make a swatch so it would be easier to choose your colors. Since I have applied water on my page, this means that I will be working with a wet-on-wet -wet watercolor technique, which means that my colors won't be so stiff on paper and they will have some movement. For this page, I wanted to make a kind of a cloudy background effect and I tried not to have any sharp edges, so you will occasionally see me using water to smooth out those sharper edges that have formed. These sharper edges wouldn't have formed if I have used a tiny bit more water on my paper, but since it is a very warm weather here in Hungary, the water on my paper was drying a bit faster than I expected. Anyway, it's just a little bit patience that can be fixed. Just keep uh, one thing in your mind, that uh, blue pigment in watercolor is more staining, which means that applied paint can't be lifted as easily as when working with some other colors. So just be more careful when you are applying a blue color. Anyway, I would like to apologize in advance if you hear some background noise, but I guess it's just one of those days when everyone decided to do something very loud. Here, as you can see, I didn't really like that splatter effect in the middle of my blue, let's call it cloud, so I kind of smoothened it out using some more water. And since I promised to make this a beginner-friendly page, I used only one shade, one color. So not to complicate it too much. Anyway, now it was time to dry my page and of course add some rub-ons. I don't know why recently I was really in the rub-on mood, so you can see me using them a lot in my recent projects. But that said, they are really beginner-friendly. If you are not familiar with them, they usually come with a background which you peel off and then you wrap them on using a bone folder or sometimes in the packaging you get a little uh, wooden stick, almost like an ice cream stick, which you can use to wrap on this uh, image and transfer it. Really easy as that. Now this time I used the white uh, rub-on on a very pale background, so the effect is not too dramatic, but I did uh, want more subtle effect because this was supposed to be very dreamy and feminine page. Now here is the girl who inspired me to create this page. It uh, comes from Craft O'Clock uh, Unicorn Sweet uh, paper pad. So no stamping, no coloring, just fussy cutting and then adding some more rub-ons. These ones are from Prima, Aquarelle Dreams collection. Really, really beautiful dreamy collection, which was uh, really fitting my page idea perfectly. And then again I repeat the process. I cut out the image that I want to transfer, decide on the location, peel the backing, and then rub them in. Some rub-ons require a little bit more rubbing in, while others transfer more easily, but honestly none of them takes too much effort, and the results are always beautiful. 
Here I was a little bit unsure, so you will see I am not peeling my image completely at one, but rubbing in, peeling a section, rubbing again and peeling section by section to be sure that the transfer is perfect. This time I decided not to edit out this part, even though it takes a little bit of time. So you can exactly see how these uh, transfers or rub-ons work. Now it's uh, image transferred perfectly, but I wanted to add a couple of more details. And for a dreamy page, I think dragonflies always go perfectly, so I will add a couple of them. Usually I like to add the odd number of these tiny details, I think it uh, looks kind of more appealing. So you will see me transferring three dragonflies. But honestly, that's not a strict rule, so you don't have to really count your elements. It's just a personal preference of mine. As you can see, I still haven't adhered my focal image because I wanted to have some freedom in deciding the exact location after I have placed the additional elements. This time I will use the rub-ons for my uh, sentiment as well, because I think this uh, Aquarelle Dream collection just really was perfect for this project. It offered all necessary elements. Here you can see me still trying to fi figure out the perfect location, but before that I will adhere my focal image using liquid glue. But you could use some uh, thin foam tape if you wanted to add some more dimension to your project. Also, uh, I think this is one of those pages we could so easily be turned into a card. Most likely for a girl, but still nonetheless a very pretty card. Now, as I said before, I really think uh, it's recommended for beginners to work in loose pages, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't put them in journal. This is a, a notebook, which doesn't have that quality mixed media paper, but what I did is to make it into an album. And as I like to give a black frame to my pages, you can see that I have painted a layer of black gesso, so once I adhere my page, it has a nice frame. Usually for adhering these pages, I use double-sided tape as for this one, but also I add up a little bit of glue, not because I think the page will move, just to add some structure to the page. Anyway, my final detail was adding a little, little bit of glitter. This is a very discreet effect, but still very pretty. Now this glitter looks more white when applied, but once it's dry, it becomes transparent. And after this one final step, I consider my page done. I hope you enjoyed the process and I hope I managed to explain every step well for you, because I think this can really be a fail-proof beginner-friendly page. But tell me in the comments what you think.
If you like this other page that you can see on the left side, I have video on that too. I will leave the link. And of course, thank you so much for being with me today. And I wish you all a nice crafty day. Bye!